Hi Synode users, I'm happy to announce that the first update of 2020 is here. From this day onwards you can use new column types in the inventory, we improved the way you can manage these columns, we updated the connection flows with Gilson Connect, and last but not least, Synode's interface got a bit of a makeover, as is appropriate for the new decade. We're still working out some details, but the major changes are already done. Excited to see the new design? Let's jump right in! So, as I mentioned before, Synode received an updated look last year and it's only right this is reflected in our app as well. We replaced our icon with a new logo and we've done away with the green buttons as we strive to mark all the important actions with our primary blue color in a way that makes things clear and concise. You can see this throughout Synode. The biggest changes already in effect can be seen in the inventories. To make this page cleaner and clearer, the actions to manage items in the inventory only show up when you really need them. This means that when you select an item, only the actions affecting that item are available to you. These actions, however, did not change, so we still have the good old edit, delete and duplicate actions right here where we left them. In addition to this, you can now edit items much faster than before. We added a quick button to each of them to make this process much smoother. You might have noticed that the save button is no longer in the same spot. To stay in line with our see it when you need it philosophy, it was moved to the top where the other context specific actions appear. Additionally, we made some changes to the assigned column. You can now see the number of tasks this item is assigned to and in the future you'll also be able to see exactly which task has this item assigned. Now let's take a look at how managing inventory columns has changed. You no longer add and edit columns from the Edit Inventory menu, now it's all done through the Manage Columns model. This is the place where you will from now on be able to set the visibility of columns, rearrange them, edit and delete them, as well as add new ones to satisfy your column needs. We're also introducing a few new column types. Let's take a look at a couple to see what they're all about. To add a new column, click on Add Column button down at the bottom of this window, enter the name of your column, I'll call mine Danger Level, then we select the column type. Let's make the first one a status column, one of the new types of columns we introduced in this patch. Now we can add a status option, we enter the name of the status and then select a suitable icon to go with it. We decided to give you some freedom of choice here, so we included a whole library of symbols that you can use as you see fit. Now we can repeat this as many times as we want, but I'll just add two more to keep things short. Click on the Save Column button to create it. Now let's add another new column type, it's called Date and Time. We repeat the same actions as before and select the date and time options from the drop-down. We have an additional option here for range, meaning we'll be able to set a starting and an end date in the same column. Ok, now that we got our columns set up, let's see them in action. We'll edit this item here and set its status to high and the starting date will be the 1st of January 2020 at... 10 a.m. and let's set the end date for the 5th of February at around 1 p.m. Now all we have to do is click save to make those changes stick. And that's all. If you have any questions or feedback for us, feel free to let us know. You can find all the information in the description below. Thank you for watching and you'll see me next time. Bye!